Hello. Hello, beautiful people. It is Sunday evening. Another beautiful day. It was a little warmer today. How about you guys? Was it warm where you were at? I like the 70s weather. Keep it in the 70s. It was too warm for me today. But anyway, got through it. It was still a beautiful day. Um, I know I got to get my AC fixed in my car because it's not working right. So you know <laughs> I don't want no real hot days right now. So Lord willing, Tuesday, I'm going to get my car fixed. But at Cozy Cottage here, Queen V, your host, I'm here for another few chapters of Little Woman. I'm not going to hold you long. We're going to get right on it. I told you guys I'm going to try to keep my videos a little short. But um, I hope everyone is doing well. And I hope you're keeping God in your life, keeping Him first. And um, if you're going through, just hold on, talk to God, pray to God about it. He'll see you through it. And I just hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm getting through it. Didn't have a, a bad day today. It was a pretty nice day, but came home from church and um, listened to two beautiful services from headquarters. Uh, one of our ministers, Elder Dan Thompson, he taught at headquarters um, live on Zoom, and uh, it was awesome. I ain't going to start talking about it. And that'll be another whole 60 minutes, and I'm not holding you guys that long. <laughs> But it was a it was a good day listening to the word of God as always. But let's get with it. I'm gonna read either two or three more chapters. We'll see how it goes as we go along. And um, you know what I always ask you? What was our last chapter? Mm, you're right. Chapter 22, Tender Troubles. Let's go. Joe, I'm anxious about Beth. I'm sure there's something on her mind, and I want you to find out what it is. She sits alone a good deal and doesn't talk to her father as much as she used to. I found her crying over the babies the other day. When she sings, the songs are always sad ones, and now and then I see a look on her face that I don't understand. Joe said, I think she's growing up, mother. Beth's 18, but we don't realize it, and we treat her like a child, forgetting she's a woman. An incident gave Joe a clue to the mystery. One afternoon when she was writing, she kept her eye on her sister, who seemed unusually quiet. Beth was sitting at the window, de um, dejectedly when, yeah, dejectedly when suddenly someone passed below whistling like an operated blackbird and a voice called out all serene coming in tonight beth started leaned forward smiled and nodded watched the passerby till his quick tramp died away then said softly as if to herself how strong and well and happy that dear boy looks Hmm, said Joe, still intent upon her sister's face, for the bright color had faded as quickly as it had come. The smile vanished, and a tear lay shining on the window ledge. Beth loves Lori. I never dreamed of such a thing. Joe said to her mother, I want to go away somewhere this winter for a change. I feel restless and anxious where will you go to new york mrs kirk wrote to you for some respectable young person to teach her children tina and kitty and to so i think i should suit her if i tried the plan was talked over in a family council and agreed upon when all was settled joe told laurie but to her surprise he took it very quietly One thing I leave in your special care, Joe said to Beth, the night before she left, is my boy. Be very good to him, won't you? I do my best for your sake, promised Beth. 
When Laurie said goodbye, he whispered, it won't do a bit of good, Joe. My eye is on you. So mind what you do or I come and bring you home. Wow. <laughs> that was chapter 22. Oh, wow. So he's in love with, oh, wow. He's in love with Joe, but Beth likes Joe, likes Laurie. But Laurie likes Joe. Wow. But anyway, chapter 23, Joe's Journal. New York, November. Dear Marmy and Beth, I've got heaps to tell. I saw a gentleman come along behind the little maid and, talk, and take the heavy hod of coal out of her hand, saying with a kind nod in a foreign accent, it goes better so. The little back is very young to have such heaviness. When I told this to Mrs. K, she simply laughed and said, that must have been Professor Bayer. He is from Berlin, very learned and good, but he is poor. He gives lessons to support himself and his two little orphan nephews. Tuesday Eve, someone began to hum. Kent's do das land, like a big bumblebee. I peeped in. Professor Bear was there. A regular German, rather stout, with brown hair and a bushy beard, good nose, the kindest eyes, and a splendid big voice. His clothes were rusty, his hands were large, and he had only beautiful teeth. I liked him. Thursday. Yesterday I was introduced to the professor. It seems as if I am doomed to see a good deal of him. Saturday. When I got back there, I saw Mr. Beard down on his hands and knees with Tina on his back, Kitty leading him with a jump rope. This is mine, Effalant, added Tina, holding on by the professor's hair. The Effalant sat up and said soberly to me, I give you my word if we make too large a noise you shall say hush to us and we go more softly i wish if americans were as simple and natural as germans don't you give heaps of love to everyone from your faithful joe that was chapter 23 so i'm going to leave off at that next chapter is chapter 24 a friend a friend chapter 24 that's gonna be our next chapter loving this book but that's gonna be it for today guys i had a day i'm ready to get out of these clothes and take a shower and just relax the rest of the evening fall asleep and then of course tomorrow to the drawing board back to work guys it wasn't bad of a weekend it was a pretty nice weekend i must say i love you guys as always never give up god can deliver you from anything hold on to god never let him go keep god in your life keep him first because he knows all and can do all. And you can do anything through Christ Jesus that strengthens you in righteousness. I love you guys.